Let's have a look at how pooling works in practice. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually define our pooling function. It's very easy. Okay, we need to import MXNet. The next thing is we define our pooling function. The important argument is the pool size, so I'm going to get the height and the width by querying the pool size. <coughs> and I'm going to distinguish between maximum and average pooling. The default is a max pooling. First thing I need to do is I need to allocate some memory that is of the size that I'm going to get by performing pooling over the input x. So I need x shape minus pooling height plus 1, the same thing for the width. So it's exactly the same semantics as what we have for convolutions, just that we don't have any parameters. And then I just iterate over all the pixels in the output. So for i and j in the range of y, I now perform the following operation. yij is the maximum over this patch here. This patch goes from i to i plus a ph and from j to j plus pw. And if I were to use mean pooling, well, I'd do this. Now this is a very poor implementation of pooling because it completely ignores channels and it also ignores padding and strides. But since this is just for illustrative purposes, I'm going to skip this here. So let's have a look at what happens. So we're going to apply 2 by 2 max pooling to this matrix, which has entries 0 to 8. And of course, if I have the first 2 by 2 block, then well, that's exactly the maximum is 4, because it has entries 0, 1, 3, and 4, and so on. Now, if I were to perform average pooling, well, I'd get something very similar. So for this first block here, 0, 1, 3, and 4, the sum over all the entries is 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. If I were to take those entries, 1, 2, 4, and 5, the sum of those entries is 12, and so I get 3, and so on. So that's good. Let's have a look at how things progress if we do something a little bit more fancy. The next thing is, we might want to look at padding and stride. So I'm going to create a matrix that's 4x4 four four with entries ranging from 0 to 15. Now, if I perform max pooling and I use the built-in function in Gluon, then by default, if I have a 3x3 three three pooling, then the window, the stride is also 3. So therefore, if I apply this to a 4x4 matrix, there's really only that first 3x3 three three block that I can grab. So the output's going to be 1x1. One one. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happens. Mind you, the entry is 10 because, well, the largest entry in that first 3x3 three three block is 10. Okay. Now, let's say I want to actually change this. Well, I could, for instance, have a padding of 1 and stride of 2. In which case, well, because I have 3x3 three three applied to a 4x4, four four, so that's actually a 6x6, six six, um, but then with a stride of 2, that gives me a 2x2 two two matrix as a result. I could have arbitrary windows with different width and different heights and different padding and different strides. And I'll leave that to anybody to verify in their own peace and quiet that the result would actually be a 3x2 matrix. So three rows, two columns. And yeah, so I can do that and therefore reshape the result in arbitrary ways. Mind you, the number of input and output channels remains unchanged. So let's do that. So I'm going to create a matrix that has, well, three, well, it has two channels. Right, so that's basically my four by four matrix, just that in one case, I have the entries going from zero to 15, the next case from 1 to 16. Okay. So now if I were to apply pooling again, so padding of 1, strides of 2, 3 by 3 pooling, I still get two output channels, 
and since the second channel has all the entries one larger than the first one, well, I get exactly 5, 7, 13, and 15, and then for the next one, 6, 8, 14, and 16. That's exactly what's to be expected. So as you can see, pooling is a very easy operation. It's straightforward to apply, and it can be used to manipulate the dimensionality of the images in order to reduce their size as needed. This concludes our conversation about convolutional layers.